Okay, 9.4, direct, joint, and inverse variation. Students will be able to recognize and solve direct, joint, and inverse variation problems. So, um, I'll give you some basic descriptions here. Um, what you're going to be faced with is eventually you're going to have word problems, and you're going to have to figure out is this a direct, joint, or inverse variation problem. And then from there, you should know which one, which equation to use. So here we go. The first one is just simply direct variation. And that's going to look like y equals kx. And now over here in red, I'm going to tell you the alternate version. If you were to solve for k, and k is a constant, it would look like k equals y over x. Okay, so these are really the same thing. This is just k all by itself. Okay, so sometimes you might see uh, the same, you might see a direct variation equation represented like this. Just remember that k is a constant. In fact, down here I put that in. All of these k is considered the constant of variation. What I mean by that is k is just a number. y and x are going to be your variables, and they might not always be y and x. They might be a and b. They might be r and t. Who knows? But um, these are your variables, and k is just a constant number. So, for example, if I was to go a distance, and then you know, if I was to walk five miles to the store and then walk five miles back, that five mile distance is a constant where my speed and my time might change, okay? All right, the next one is uh, inverse variation. And that looks like um, y equals k over x again. Don't confuse these two. The k is still with the x, but it's they vary inversely. We have a number over x. And if I was to solve for k, it would look like k equals x times y. All right, so that's inverse variation. And the last one here is joint variation. And this has to do with uh, when you have more than two variables, when you have three variables. So this standard form looks like y equals k, x, z. And if you were to solve this one for k, it would look like k equals y over x and z. Okay. Um, so you have your three different equations. I generally use these, but you should be aware of these because sometimes you'll see it in this form and sometimes this form will help you a little bit. So let's take a look. Example number one. <clears throat> It says, hey, if y varies directly, ah, oh, there's my clue, directly. Which one am I going to use? Direct. y equals k to the x. Let's just go ahead and write that. Okay, so y varies directly as x. y equals 12 when x equals negative 3. So we have two, we have a situation here where we have both variables. We're going to use that to find k. I'll show you in just a second. Then it says find y when x equals 16. So now they're changing x on us. And we're supposed to see what that does to y. Well, in order to figure out what that does to y, we have to figure out what k is. So, let's do it. Okay, we know that y equals 12 when x equals 3. So, we're going to say that y equals 12. We don't know k. And x is negative 3. Divide both sides by negative 3. And you get that k equals negative 4. Okay. Alright, well, now that we know what k is, we can write another equation. We could say, hey, y equals negative 4 x. And you'll notice this looks kind of just like the equation of a line. And it is. If we were to graph direct variation, we'd see it just looks like a line. Okay, so now they say, hey, find y when x equals 16. So that means all you got to do is plug in 16 for x. Well, negative 4 times 16 um, is the same thing as 8 times 8, so negative 8 times 8 is negative 64. So y equals negative 64. There we go. All right, so let's try example number 2. Hey, this one says, suppose y varies jointly. Hey, which one am I going to use? Joint. So y equals kxz. I'm going to write that down. And this one says, find y when x equals 8 and z equals 3. So this is the situation I'm going to find. <clears throat> y4, but I need a situation where I have all the variables. Here we go. If y equals 16, z equals 2, and x equals 5. That's what I'm going to use to find k. Then I'm going to plug it back in to find y. So let's do it. So they say if y equals 16, don't know.
1, okay, x is 5, and z is 2. Well, 5 times 2 is 10, and if I divide both sides by 10, cancel everything out, and I'd get k equals 16 over 10, or 8 over 5. Okay, so there's k, so now I can rewrite this. y equals 8 over 5 times x times z, and now I'm supposed to find y when x equals 8 and z equals 3. So let's do that. y, 8 fifths, x is 8, and z is 3. Okay, well, 8 times 8 is 64, times 3, 192 over 5, and you could just leave it like that. y equals 192 over 5. Boom. If you wanted to figure out the what that is like in decimal form, you could, but it's about, it's around 30 something. Okay. Now, uh, next one says, if r varies inversely, hey, okay, which one are we going to use? Well, we're going to use inverse variation, so let's write it down, y equals k over x. But this one's a little bit different. This one says if r varies inversely as t. Okay, well look, we've been saying y varies. Y varies. Okay, so y is the thing that's varying. So now the r is going to replace the y here. So we can really say that r equals k over t. And we know that r equals 18 when t equals negative 3. So let's just plug that in. 18 equals k over negative 3. Solve for k. Well, we multiply both sides by negative 3, which gives us negative 54 for k. All right, so that means I can use this same equation, r equals k over t, but I could put in a negative 54 in for k. And we're supposed to find r now when t is negative 11. So plug in an r, uh, or plug in a negative 11 for t, negative or negative makes positive, so the answer is just 54 elevenths, or just a little bit under 5. Okay, so I've done all three with you, I've done a, a direct, a joint, and an inverse. Uh, on practice number one, I want you guys to try this one on your own, and then I will put the answer up in just a second. So let me zoom in. You guys try practice number one, and you may want to pause the video because the answer will be up soon. Okay, so it says y varies jointly, so I used the joint equation. And then I found the situation where they gave me all the variables. It says y equals 10, z equals 4, x equals 7, so I plugged all those in. I solved for k, and I got 5 fourteenths. So then I rewrote that equation with 5 fourteenths in for k. y equals 5 fourteenths, x and z. y equals 5 over 14. Um, I plugged in an, a 7 for x and a 2 for z because that's what they told me to find y for when x is 7 and z is 2. And something to think about is that this 7 and 2 is just going to cancel out that 14. And that's because 7 is the same thing as 7 over 1 and 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. So we have 7 times 2 on top and a 14 on bottom. Well, 7 times 2 is 14. So they cancel and we're left with just 5. So y equals 5. Okay, so this last one um, is kind of a fun problem. The way it's worded kind of makes it a little bit tricky. Um, it says the apparent length of an object is inversely proportional. Okay, right away, I already see this. I know I'm going to be using the inverse proportion. So let's just write that. It was y equals k over x. Okay. Inversely proportional to one's distance from the object. Okay, except we're not using y and x. We're using length and distance. So we could say that the length is inversely proportional to the distance. So we're going to use L equals K over D instead of Y equals K over X. And this says Earth is 93 million miles from the Sun. If Mercury is 36 miles from the Sun, how much larger does the diameter of the Sun appear on Mercury than on Earth? Hint, pretend the diameter of the Sun from, the, from our perspective is simply one unit. Okay, so what I mean by this but just one unit. They're not asking us for the actual diameter of the sun. They don't want to know that. They just want to know how much larger it appears on Mercury than on Earth. 
So let's say that from our perspective, as we're looking up at the sun, from our perspective, that it's just one unit wide. So, okay, maybe I'll draw a horrible sketch here. You know, here's Earth. All right, we're looking at the sun. And from our perspective, the diameter is simply one unit. We could call it like one Earth sun unit, whatever you want to call it. One sun unit. It has some length. We don't know what it is, but we don't care what it is exactly. We just care how much bigger it appears on Mercury than on Earth. So we start with one. It'll be really easy to compare. Because if I go from one to like five, I'll know, hey, it's five times bigger. Okay, so let's go back to our equation then. It says that the length of an object um, is inversely proportional to one's distance from the object. So let's say then, I'm going to use this equation, that the length of the diameter of the sun is just simply one. And that um, we have a k value, some constant, over the distance. Well, the distance on according from Earth is 93 million miles. Well, if I was to solve for k here, I'd multiply both sides by 93 million miles, and I would just get that k equals 93 million miles. So there's my k value, 93 million miles. Great. I could say 93 million miles times one sun unit, but that's not really important here. Now, again, I have this equation, L equals K over D. I do not know the apparent length of the sun on Mercury, but I do know the distance from the sun to Mercury, and I do know K. So the length of, um, from Mercury's perspective, so I put a little M down there, is K, which I know to be 93 million miles, over... The distance from Mercury to the Sun is 36 million miles. Well, right away you should see that our units cancel out, and all we're left with is, hey, whatever this length is, or our Sun units, our made-up units that we came up with. So what's 93 divided by 36? Well, I get about 2.58. So the length is about 2.58. Well, okay, remember, we said earlier that it's just one. Well, if on Mercury, is 2.58, we could say that the sun appears, sorry, that's a horrible A, about 2.58 times bigger on Mercury than on Earth. There we go. I know my handwriting is atrocious, but we've answered their question. We didn't really need to know a distance, we just need to know how much bigger it appears, and that's how much bigger it appears. So, about two and a half times bigger. Okay, thanks guys. See you guys on the next video.